With the arrival of many Poles, Scotland streets have seen a major change in the last decade. In fact, Polish is now the second most spoken language in Scottish homes. My name is Joanna Kaczyńska and I am one of the Poles who came to Scotland when Poland joined the European Union in 2004. I made the move to the UK to further my career as a singer and an actress. I never pose for photos. If there's no proof of what I ever looked like, then how I do look now is the best. Yes? Anyway, back to now. I am now firmly settled in Glasgow and working in film and theatre across Scotland and the UK. I dearly love both Scotland and Poland and I would like to share a bit of both countries with you. The Polish community is now well established in Scotland and there are more and more Polish shops opening. Polish products also seem to go down well with Scottish customers. Sausages and bread, and ham. the best products. Yeah. Even, what is weird for me, they buy even in Polish magazines. They cannot read in Polish but they love it. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes they are trying to speak with us by Polish. They knew some Polish words, yeah, so it's, very it's nice funny for and us. nice for it's us. It's very nice yeah. to hear as some Scottish people talk in Polish. Trying. In the last decade, there's been a huge increase in Polish people settling in Scotland and by 2011 there were 67,000 Poles here. I think life is much easier here for, for us. It was very hard at the beginning because of language, language and different, yes. different culture, but everything can be possible. So. And the weather. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> it's hard for us. The weather is horrible. <laughs> The Polish community even has its own radio show in which listeners can vote for their favorite Polish band. The show is fronted by Maciej Tomczyk. All my life I dreamed about a job like a DJ in radio. Scotland give me more experience, more opportunities, so I'm glad it's good for me. Because I do something for Polish culture. Dobrej nocy! Most Scots will have met someone who is Polish, a builder, hotel staff, doctor or a neighbor. And each of them will have a variety of reasons for choosing to move to Scotland. The Wierzbicki family moved to Scotland in 2011. Polsce. The family chose Glasgow as they already had friends who found a job here. Szeroki wachlarz prac, które można tutaj wykonywać, może nie są płatne tak jak jakbyśmy sobie tego życzyli, ale ten minimum starcza nam na, na przeżycie, na opłaty, które wiążą się z mieszkaniem, jak również na takie godziwe życie. Młodszy syn, ponieważ ma 11 lat, bardzo szybko się zaklimatyzował w szkole. Poza tym jest zapalonym sportowcem i bardzo szybko załapał się do futbolowej drużyny szkolnej. No i bardzo się z tego cieszy. Szybko uczy się też języka. Natomiast starszy syn ma 14 lat i to jest taki już troszkę trudny wiek dla zmiany dla dziecka, prawda? To on tam zyskał już swoich przyjaciół w Polsce, zaklimatyzował się i teraz trudno mu jest tą barierę językową pokonać i jest mu, widzimy, że jest mu dużo trudniej. Halo? Dzień dobry. Na ten pół roku. Cały czas jesteśmy w kontakcie. Telefoniczny, mailowy, przez komunikatory, Skype. Nie ma tygodnia, żebyśmy nie rozmawiali z kimś z bliskich lub z przyjaciół. Do usłyszenia. Cześć, spokojnej nocy, pa, pa. No hej, pa. <laughs> Migration goes both ways. I'm meeting up with Emilia. Hi, Emilia. Hi. She's Scottish but lived in Poland with her family for eight years. So tell me, how is it now in Scotland? How do you find it? Um, I'm really enjoying it, yeah. It's good to be back. But I miss my friends and I miss speaking Polish, I guess. I guess I kind of miss my school. Yeah. Did you find the level of education to be higher in Poland than it is in Scotland? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think Poland probably prepares you better for exams and everything, but in Scotland they actually prepare you for like life. Yeah. 
I feel that Poland was definitely a big part in my life and you know I learned the language, I knew the people, I made so many friends. Poland's definitely part of me. How often do you go back to Poland? Well, my orthodontist is actually uh, in Poland, so every 12 weeks I have to go back for a checkup. During one of her regular trips to Poland, Emilia has the chance for a surprise visit to her old school on the outskirts of Warsaw. Emilia's friends have no idea they are about to see their old classmate again. But for Emilia, school lunch is one of the things she definitely hasn't missed. Lots of people say that their favorite time at school is lunch, but for me that was definitely not the case. I didn't particularly like what I should. There's some of it that's quite nice, but the pierogi and potato pancakes aren't nice. Scotland saw a major increase in Polish migration after Poland joined the EU in 2004. But throughout history there has been a close connection between Scotland and Poland. Since the late 14th century, the Baltic region enjoyed strong trade links with Scotland. By the 17th century, the city of Gdańsk was home to an estimated 30,000 Scots. Even though the Scottish immigrants eventually became integrated into the wider Gdańsk community, their legacy has been long-lasting. During the Second World War, Scotland received a big influx of Polish people. In fact, it was referred to as the Polish invasion. Before we in Britain had realized what was happening, the fate of war brought us together. We, the Scots, and you, the Poles. After France was lost to the Germans, more than 20,000 Polish soldiers came over to defend our shores. Most of the Polish soldiers based in the UK during the war were stationed here in Scotland. And this map is evidence of that. Polish troops were stationed at Barony Castle in the borders under the command of General Maciek, who designed a large-scale map of Scotland to plan coastal defences. But it wasn't until the 1970s he managed to realize his dream to construct this amazing map in three dimensions. It is 50 meters across and shows Scotland's mountains, lochs and coastline. One of the cartographers he brought over from Krakow to help build the map was Professor Kazimierz Trafas. His younger brother is Tomasz Trafas, who by a strange quirk of fate is the Polish Consul General based in Edinburgh. Shall we do this in English or in Polish? In Polish, <laughs> English. What do you prefer? Let's do it in English. Okay. Do you think your brother was a bit mad to build this whole big map of Scotland? I don't think so. I, I think it was a kind of challenge, you know, opportunity to, to do something which is very exceptional, very different, you know. And there was a, maybe a part of a competition among the young scientists. Okay. It's, it's my project, you know, it was done, you know, it, it's possible to, to do such a thing and, and because it's very unusual. The map was built in recognition of the warm welcome given to Polish soldiers in the Second World War. Since its construction in the 1970s, it's been left to decay, but now a Scottish organization, Mapa Scotland, has been set up to return the compliment, to restore the map to its former glory. It should be a nice and very interesting tourist attraction for foreign tourists, for Scots as well. How many places you can visit and you can see, you know, the exact three-dimensional map of some part of territory is very unusual. So that's interesting. You actually are now living in Scotland and you're... No, let's say that's 
absolutely it's only coincidence and I didn't realize that I will stay here in the capacity of Polish consul and just to see you know what, what my brother made in the beginning of 70s. Leaving your home country and relatives behind is not easy. Jacek Kunisz has decided to leave Poland. Together with his wife and son, he is about to make the move to Britain. The family live behind a small flat on the outskirts of Warsaw. I have a friend who has a lot of help, who also offers me help in this situation. Nie mówię o kokosach nie? i ewentualnie pomóc mojej matce. Mieszka w centrum Warszawy, więc jest osobą też już starszą i lekarstwa to jest jedna część, część druga część i z czego tu żyć. Tak. Czapi. Daj następne. Gdybym nigdy stąd nie wyjeżdżał, gdyby była nawet ciężka praca. Bardzo ciężka, może być bardzo ciężka praca. Nie interesuje mnie to. Tylko żebym ja wiedział, że ona jest o tyle dobra, tak płatna, że ja jadę, idę do pracy, wracam i jestem spokojny i nie martwię się o nic. No niestety tak tutaj nie jest. Tęsknota no będzie za... Musiałem sprzedać samochód, wie pani jak ja za nim tęsknię. No jest. Takim drobiazgi za kotem, którego nie możemy teraz zabrać, tak? Chociaż bardzo byśmy chcieli. Ale, ale najpierw my musimy cokolwiek jakoś ustabilizować się tam, spróbować, tak, a wtedy możemy myśleć, czy może jakiś kot. It's quarter to five in the morning and Jacek, his wife and his son are about to depart for the UK. To nie jest wycieczka, to jest, to jest wejście w jakieś nowe życie. I, bo nie jadę sam, tak, jedziemy we trójkę i, i wystarczy jedna Jedno z nas nie będzie się czuło za dobrze, to, to pozostali też nie będą czuli się komfortowo. Zapraszam do kontroli bezpieczeństwa i wyjście 1B. Fajnie, dziękuję. Dziękuję. Także decyzja jest ciężka. I... Okay. Nie, sprób... nie dowiemy się, jak nie spróbujemy. Bywało lepiej, ale... Nieźle. Pełna myśli, co tu zostaje, nie, a co tam będzie. No. Trochę ciężko było wyjść z domu, rozstać się z kotem. I... With the expansion of the EU, there is a lot more cross-border travel all across Europe. Poland's central location means it has seven borders, and two of its neighboring countries are not part of the EU. Karol is a border guard at Bezledy, and looks after the vehicles crossing between Poland and Russia. Dzień dobry, Karol Mateusz, Straż Graniczna. Proszę o pokazanie dokumentów. Staliśmy się właśnie bardziej Europejczykami poprzez podróże, poprzez przekraczanie granicy do innych krajów. Myślę, że podróże sprzyjają i uczą. I Polacy, którzy podróżują, którzy wrócili do naszego kraju, przywieźli te podstawowe i takie właściwe wartości od naszych sąsiadów. Czyli zakupy się udały? Da, wszystko normalnie, pakówki działali dla siebie. Jak zakupy udane, da, da, da. wszyscy zadowoleni, to poproszę z paszportami Aha. do okienka kolego. Karol also patrols the much less defined borders between Poland and Russia. W tej chwili znajdujemy się na zielonym odcinku granicy państwowej. Granica jest oznakowana znakami urządzeniami granicznymi. Polski słup graniczny w kolorze biało-czerwonym, rosyjski znak w kolorze czerwono-zielonym i w środku monolit, który tak naprawdę wyznacza linię granicy państwowej Polski. Through the centuries, Poland's borders have been constantly disputed. But Poland's current shape is a direct result of the Second World War. In September 1939, the Nazis invaded the country. The war had a devastating effect on Poland. 
It was under Nazi occupation for six years, and during this time nearly a quarter of the Polish population were killed. Three million of them were Jewish. Poland's most infamous concentration camp was Auschwitz, which is the German name for Oświęcim, a little town in the south of Poland. Małgorzata Jakubas is 29 years old and studies political science. Her college building was originally part of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Znajdujemy się w miejscu, gdzie w 44 roku kilku więźniów ówczesnego obozu włożyło list do butelki, z, na którym na tej kartce napisali swoje, swoje numery obozowe, nazwiska i miejsca, z którego pochodzili. Wszyscy ci więźniowie byli w wieku od 18 do 20 lat. Włożyli tą, kart, tą kartkę do butelki i zamurowali aby przyszłość odkopana stanowiła dowód na to, co działo się w Auschwitz. It wasn't just the Jews that were sent to die in the concentration camps. Hitler's Nazi party also targeted the mentally ill and the disabled. Za każdym razem, jak tu jestem, wyobrażam sobie ludzi, którzy, do których należeli, należały te buty, którzy chodzili w tych butach, co, co musieli czuć, kim byli, skąd pochodzili. Wiem, że to nie są przedmioty oderwane w ogóle z, z niczego. To są przedmioty, które kiedyś należały do tych osób, a ich już nie ma. To jest straszne. The majority of Jews transported to Auschwitz-Birkenau died in gas chambers, most of them within an hour of arriving here. For this group of Israeli Jews, visiting this place is a particularly emotional experience. I think every person should know that it can happen everywhere, uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. If people don't pay attention one to each other, if people don't take care, if people uh, don't see behind their shoulders, yeah. just think for themselves, it can, it can happen everywhere. The war in 1945 didn't mean the end of occupation for Poland. Russia imposed communist rule and it remained like that until 1989 when the Solidarity Movement led by Lech Wałęsa forced democratic elections. By the 1990s here in Scotland the mining industry was a shadow of its former self. But in Poland coal mining has remained a huge part of the economy. Kniówek coal mine is one of Poland's deep cast mines. Sławek Polak is a mine foreman. Codziennie rano wstaję około godziny czwartej rano. Normalnie jak każdy człowiek idę do łazienki, myję się, przygotowuję się do pracy. Potem żegnam się z żoną, żegnam się z dziećmi. Tradycyjnie robię jakiś krzyżyk na głowie, od żony dostaję to samo. No i udaję się do pracy około godziny 5, 5.30, jestem na kopalni. 
Konkur będziemy zjechać teraz właśnie na poziomie 830. Każdy zjazd zaczniemy od tradycyjnego Szczęść Boże Górniczego. Szczęść Boże wszystkim. Poland is highly dependent on coal. It not only provides most of its electricity, but is a major export and is a big employer. Over a hundred thousand people work in the Polish coal industry. Jak to jest być górnikiem? No jest to specyficzny zawód. Na pewno jest to ciężka praca. No ale ale daje wiele w satysfakcji. Trzeba ją pokochać. Trzeba ją polubić, trzeba ją zaakceptować i wtedy daje wiele satysfakcji. Warunki są tutaj na dole takie, że gdybyśmy się udali tam jakieś 100 metrów dalej, nie zobaczylibyśmy własnego palca przed nosem, usłyszelibyśmy tylko własne serce. With Europe's strict CO2 emission targets, Poland will be expected to become less reliant on coal, but any reduction in coal mining will have a huge impact on the people who work there. Ta praca daje stabilizację finansową, daje poczucie takiego bezpieczeństwa i upadek, że tak powiem, górnictwa, bym tak powiedział, nie spowodowałby jakby jednostkowego zamknięcia zawodu, ale byłoby to odczuwalne, że tak powiem, w całym otoczeniu. Bo tak jak mi się wydaje, to po prostu ta kopalnia to nie jesteśmy tylko my, w sensie kopalnia, ale jest dużo przedsiębiorstw, dużo zawodów, które są związane razem z nami. To jest pomnik świętej Barbary, naszej patronki na dole, patronki wszystkich górników, do której oddajemy hołd i cześć z modlitwą, bez względu na wyznanie. Jest to nasza opiekunka na dole, nasza patronka, której powierzamy wszystkie swoje troski i bóle. Szczęść Boże, Święta Barbara. Poland is a country of strong family values and tradition. On All Saints Day, people from all over Poland gather to visit the graves of loved ones and place candles and flowers on graves. The special candles, which can burn for many hours, are placed there so that departed souls can find their way through the darkness. The Gregorczyk Janik family live in Letz, a little village outside Warsaw. For Agata, All Saints Day is a very important day. U nas w rodzinie to święto jest świętem wyjątkowym i takim rodzinnym, można powiedzieć. Od dziecka kojarzyło mi się no, z cmentarzami, z chodzeniem po cmentarzach, szczególnie wieczorową porą, kiedy właśnie ta atmosfera jest najlepiej wyczuwalna, czyli te światełka, mnóstwo światełek, zapach tych zniczy unoszący się i, takie, i taka niecodzienna właśnie atmosfera. All Saints Day is a national holiday and it is an opportunity for family members to bond and to remember those they have lost. I do tej pory lubię ten dzień ze względu na to właśnie na tą zadumę i na to wędrowanie od grobu do grobu, na tą atmosferę właśnie na, na cmentarzu i, i to i to, że rzeczywiście człowiek wtedy myśli, myśli nad swoim życiem, przypominają mu się takie właśnie wartości i to, co jest naprawdę ważne, a co, co w zasadzie nie jest ważne i istotne. All Saints Day is one of the occasions I really miss living here in Scotland. Family is very important in Poland, and that is one of the hardest things about living abroad. Another Pole who decided to move his family is Paweł Klim. He moved to Aberdeen to gain experience as a ship designer three years ago, but they have now returned to Poland. We decided finally to move to Scotland. 
to Aberdeen, somewhere where is the offshore market, which I could learn a lot of, just to develop the skills to to have more chance to, to talk with other people, other companies, and to have in the international environment. Another advantage of moving his family to Scotland was a better work and life balance. This allowed him to spend more time with his family. Pavel's working hours in Poland are a lot longer. My life in Scotland was much easier than in Poland. We had much more time after work. In Poland, life is completely different. Sometimes I have to take work to home, sometimes I need to just organize uh, some jobs for me, and it's harder. When Pavel's children reached school age, the family had a big decision to make. Whether to stay in Scotland permanently or to move back to Poland. Our children need to start school and we had the choice or we start the school in Scotland and then we will be there for uh, another 10 years or something. We spoke with our family and all decided that it's the time to, to move back. Poland's labor force is going through huge changes. More than half of Polish workers are now working in its service industry. And with the constant traffic between Poland and the rest of Europe, the country's culture is enriched by these outside influences. The Warsaw Village Band plays traditional Polish folk music combined with modern elements. Maciej Szajkowski plays percussion in the band. Nas inspiruje i jazz, i muzyka klasyczna, i punk rock, i hardcore, i awangarda, i minimal, i reggae, dub, i drum and bass, hip hop. Te wszystkie gatunki po prostu lubimy i staramy się poszukiwać w ramach muzyki współczesnej, muzyki dawnej, inspiracji. Zacierają się granice, na pewno granice kulturowe przestają mieć znaczenie. W ramach takiego globalnego świata jest czymś niesłychanie ważnym. Czy poznając, czy odkrywając tradycje i odkrywając i poznając siebie, stanowimy o swojej tożsamości, ale łatwiej nam też jest się odnaleźć w tym, w tym świecie współczesnym. With global cultural and social borders becoming more fluid, the fact that both Poland and Scotland have a shared past will make the link between our two countries stronger over time. In fact, it's quite strange. I still have a distinct Polish accent when I speak, but there's no doubt. Scotland is the country I call home. The Beech Grove Garden is next tonight and later at nine here on BBC Two Scotland, predatory white-tailed eagles engage in the hunt in Hebrides, Islands on the Edge.